All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna to be talking about iodinated media, the contrast. There's a currently a contrast shortage as we're recording this video. So we're gonna be talking about methods to reduce contrast in X-ray and CT imaging. Coming up here at How Radiology Works where we have bite-sized information for you in the radiology field, especially X-ray and CT imaging. Current contrast media shortage occurred because there was a lockdown at the end of March in Shanghai, in which the whole city of millions of people was forced on immediate lockdown. This immediate shutdown actually caused significant disruption to the supply chain. Manufacturers have worked very hard in order to reduce the duration and the impact of this by having people working on site. So having reduced amount of the workers, but working on site in a quarantine manner and then as well as ramping back up as soon as possible. In general, what we wanna focus on today is methods to reduce the use of the ionated media. The reason why the contrast material is so important is that it is used to increase the ability to visualize either vessels or parenchyma or lesions that are taking up that contrast such that they will be able to be better visualized with respect to the background in CT and X-ray imaging. There's a variety of procedures that use contrast, such as CT angiography. So this includes vessel imaging all throughout the body, including the brain, the heart, peripherals. Additionally, CT perfusion imaging, where we're doing multiple passes and we're essentially figuring out the characteristics of the perfusion or the flow within the brain tissue itself. This requires the contrast media in order to be able to track the blood passing through the brain. For trauma exams, especially in the case of multi-site trauma, it's often the case that contrast is used in an exam going from the head all the way down to the pelvis. In the case of ischemic bowel, you're often going to use contrast in order to look for the reason that there's a reduced blood flow getting to the gut. And in cancer staging, you're often gonna use contrast. And you're gonna typically be looking at multiple phases of contrast in the abdomen to look at the way in which the different tissue uptakes the contrast and how long the contrast stays in the different types of tissue. So in the case of an acute shortage, such as the current one, it may be necessary to have shunting of exams to other modalities. And Bristol has a, a large table, which we'll link out below. But in general, there's different modalities depending on the different type of imaging, such as renal imaging. Ultrasound is actually a possibility as an alternative. For cardiac imaging, in the case of a stress type exam, it's possible to use nuclear medicine stress exam or MR stress exams as an alternative. Cancer imaging, PET-CT is actually an alternative to CT imaging of multi-phase with iodinated contrast. Several use cases in the abdomen, in the brain, angiography, perfusion, just general soft tissue imaging. MRI in that case would be the preferred option to have as an alternative imaging modality to CT. I'm also gonna talk about ways that you could modify your CT parameters in order to get the most out of what you have, essentially, in terms of the contrast media. So spectral imaging is the first thing we wanna talk about. In the case of spectral imaging or doing lower KVP imaging, both of those cases allow you to essentially increase the conspicuity of the contrast because the contrast of iodine is going to go up with respect to the background soft tissue. So either low KEV imaging, if you have an x-ray tube which can really support high MAs at low KVP, that is one option. Or looking at spectral imaging where you can use the lower KEVs. In both of those cases, you can get increase conspicuity of your iodine with respect to the background, allowing you to reduce the contrast dose. Faster imaging will also be beneficial because if you can perform that scan faster, you in general can use less iodinated contrast because you don't need to keep that area 
opacified for as long. So you do need to have a more modern scanner to use this, but in general, you can look at wider collimations or higher pitch scanning options on your systems. Additionally, tighter tracking of the contrast throughout the exam is also an option wherein you're actually relatively tracking the imaging right behind the bolus of the contrast. This allows for using less contrast, but it is more susceptible to issues wherein if you outrun that contrast bolus, basically if you're too fast or too slow, you might have non-ideal imaging. There's also contrast modification strategies. If you are using the discrete contrast doses, a lot of times the contrast can actually be prescribed such that you only use one given contrast dose or a discrete number of contrast dose. In case you don't have the waste of the extra half contrast dose that, that you might end up throwing away. It does have the disadvantage, however, of having a lower amount of contrast that's available to be used during the exam. Also coming onto the market now are syringeless contrast injectors, which you basically just fill up for the day and then you're not using specific contrast doses for each patient. In this case, you can actually not worry about the extra loss that's involved in having a fraction of a contrast dose, which you end up throwing away. To have safety valves built in to make sure that bodily fluids actually don't end up in the device, but they do require a patient-specific set of this uh, sophisticated tubing. So far, we've been talking about the diagnostic CT side. There's also the interventional side. You also need iodinated contrast media. And we're gonna talk about some alternatives and ways to reduce that iodinated contrast media. First alternative is actually using carbon dioxide. So we could use carbon dioxide it has the advantage that it's safe. There's no allergies with respect to carbon dioxide. It is the case that you have to image quickly because it's going to displace that blood and then you're going to image, so you'd be imaging negative contrast actually, where the carbon dioxide has replaced the blood. This could be used alternatively with iodine, such that you do some imaging with carbon dioxide, and then you do your money shot with the iodine. For imaging of the cerebral vasculature, you wanna make sure you don't use carbon dioxide. Also just dilute the contrast media. This has the advantage you're gonna be able to stretch it longer, but the disadvantage that you're gonna have reduced image contrast during your exams. Gadolinium, in comparison with iodine, is significantly less attenuating, so it's not an ideal contrast agent. In 2006, they found out that there's nephrosystemic fibrosis, which can be caused by deposition of gadolinium. For this reason, gadolinium isn't the best substitute of iodine for this type of imaging. Recently, there was a paper from Dr. Grist and others, and radiology, including Elliot Fishman, including Dr. Motsubasa. And the idea of this paper is to talk about a few different tiers of strategies that could be useful in order to deal with this contrast shortage. First off is to have an immediate reaction in which as an institution, you develop a center basically for imaging and for operations such that this would be the site to make the decisions and have communication of these decisions about the use of contrast media. So there will have to be essentially reduction or rationing of the contrast media, determining the types of exams that really need to use the contrast media and having a central point of contact for making these decisions. For patients who have elective procedures, not immediate imaging, the idea is to delay that imaging until after the current shortage. In the midterm, their proposal is to have options for reducing the use of iodinated contrast, especially for reusing essentially the disposable vials that are currently used and working through the logistics of that as far as making sure it's safe on a patient by patient basis in terms of no backflow of bodily fluids as well as dealing with the filling. In the long term, Gristadol recommends to build up a backlog of iodinated contrast, such as a stockpile in case of this type of a shortage in the future. 
in general, the contrast media typically is good for about three years. So you could have, say, a six month supply on backlog at each institution or regionally. You know the ways to reduce contrast media usage for your x ray imaging. See our video on photoelectric and Compton to make sure that you understand the physics behind these interactions and their attenuating properties.